Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I guess technically this would be part eight. We're going to be studying Mark chapter four, the book of Mark chapter four, starting in verse one. The previous study uh, I did, well, I did Matthew chapter 24, where I did a three-hour Bible study on that. So this will be the one after that. All right, verse 1. And he, Jesus, and he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine. You know, people say that doctrine isn't important. And they say, oh, well, all you got to do is believe. Well, believe what? Is Jesus just a man that became God? That's what the New Agers teach, that we're all gods. We just got to realize the God spark within us. And that's what the, a lot of New Agers believe. Um, the Mormons teach that Jesus was Satan's brother. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus is just an angel. You know, Michael, that's him. But um, Jesus asked Peter, you know, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He's the anointed one. He is the Messiah. He's God come in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16, look it up. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit. I mean, doctrine's important, people. I mean, can you imagine a Mormon standing before Jesus and telling him that he is Satan's brother? I mean, would you want Satan's brother as your savior? Eh, wrong. I pass. All right, so, and he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine. And his doctrine wasn't his own, it was his father's. Verse 3, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. Now we're talking about seeds here. Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Okay, so here it is, the twelve disciples are saying, Uh, Yo, hey, what's up with this with these parables? That's the Bob translation. Verse 11. And he, Jesus, and he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables, that seeing they may see, and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. Now, think about that when people tell you that, oh, everybody can be saved. Anybody can be saved. Well, that might be true, but, you know, 
it seems like uh, when you listen to this, God blinds their eyes and stops up their hearing so they don't understand, so that they won't be converted and their sins would be forgiven them. Uh, you know, I read this. This is hard. This is hard stuff. I mean, it, it looks like God, you know, they God the Father doesn't want everybody to be saved, does it? I mean, when you read this, I mean, you know, I, I don't see any other way to get around it. Verse 13, And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word of God. And these are they by the wayside, when the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things entering in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some an hundred. Now think about it. Uh, this is uh, uh, verse 16. Uh, let's see. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground. You ever heard of a, a bumpy road? Well, that's what we got here. Who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. To me, this, I think about this. Every time I read this, I think the pre-trib rapture and, and church people, when they have to go through the trouble, persecution, the tribulation, how many of them are going to fall away? How many? I, 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 you know, I don't know. How many? All right, let's skip down to verse 21. And he said unto them, is a candlestick brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. If any man hear ears to hear, let him hear. Uh, in other words, all our secret sins are going to be... It's going to be like uh, one of those big screen TVs for everybody to see. And I'll tell you what, people, it's uh, you probably sit through a couple of years just looking at mine. So, verse 24. And he said unto them, Take heed. Here we go. Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall be given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath. In other words, whatever we measure a person by, we're going to be measured by the same measurement. And You know, where Jesus said, judge not lest ye be judged. You know, and it's like, a person that smokes judging somebody because they drink too much. It's like, really? You know, oh, well, I don't drink. And you're sitting there puffing on smoke. And, I, you know, I'm not a hypocrite. I used to smoke, drink. Uh, pff, what can I tell you? But uh, that's, 
you know, whatever we measure another person by, that's what we're going to be measured by. We're going to be judged by the same standards that we judge everybody else. Now, I'm not talk. I'm talking about believers, uh, judging believers. And but Jesus also said to judge righteous judgment, didn't he? In John chapter 22, I mean, I'm sorry, John chapter 7, verse 22. Uh, the Jews were upset with Jesus because he healed somebody on the Sabbath day. 722, John. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. See, they're working on the Sabbath day. They do circumcision. If it's the, they had to circumcise a child on the eighth day. That was the covenant. And if the eighth day fell on a Sabbath day, guess what? They broke the Sabbath. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man every whit whole? On the Sabbath day? I mean, really, you're mad at Jesus because he healed a man on the Sabbath day? Really? Verse 24, Jesus said, Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. And they were not judging righteous judgment. So, all right, uh, let's see. Let's go back to Mark chapter 4 and verse 26. Verse 24 at 5. For he that hath to him shall be given unto him, and he that hath not from him shall be taken, even that which he hath. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring up, uh, should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the ear, uh, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Well, that's just like, you know, uh, it's spiritual. Um, I'm not an evangelist. That's why I don't do, um, I don't know, some people do altar calls or whatever or ask people to be saved, you know, and I'm not an evangelist. I'm a teacher. I take, a, I'm, hopefully I can take a baby Christian and turn them into a soldier. That's, that's what teachers do. Um, I, I'm no good. I, I don't think I've ever led anybody to Christ. I've tried, but it's just, I just don't have that spiritual gift. I don't have it. But an evangelist needs to take somebody, plant the seed, and then hopefully somebody else waters that seed, and then they become strong in the faith. I mean, you know, that's, that's how it works. And eventually the, uh, the angels are going to be uh, the ones that do the harvest, Eventually. Verse 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh great, and becometh greater than all herbs. Did you know mustard? Jesus called Mustard, the greatest of all herbs? I mean, come on. Who doesn't like a hot dog? All beef, that is. Who doesn't like a, a hot dog without mustard? I mean, come on. Yeah, I know some of you guys like ketchup or gals, but uh, I'm a mustard guy myself. But uh, especially deli mustard, right? Jesus says it's the greatest of all herbs. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And with many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them 
And when they were alone, he expounded all things unto his disciples. See, to the multitude, he would talk to them in parables. They didn't get it all always, you know. But when they were alone, he would explain the parables to the disciples. Verse 35. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over to unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and they were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Now, I don't know if you know it, but if, if you are in a storm and you want to go to the calm part of a ship, the back, unless the waves are crashing from the back. Uh, usually, when you're, when you're going into a, a well, when there's a storm and you're on a boat or a ship, you want the front of the ship going into the waves. The back of the ship will be the most calm, the most peaceful. I learned that. I did. I used to do weddings and on some uh, ships and boats, whatever. And uh, boy, I tell you what, rough waves on the front of a ship, you can get bounced around. Uh, I, I could tell you some stories, but one of these days I'm going to probably write a book on uh, all some of the crazy wedding stories I've got. Boy, I've got. <laughs> I've got a few of them, but uh, still working on the uh, End Times book. Kind of hard to do when you're doing Bible studies, so. All right, so. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they wake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him. Well, yeah, what manner of man is this? Well, the answer is... Well, the answer to that is in 1 Timothy 3.16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. You see, Jesus was not some ordinary man, and he wasn't a mere prophet like the, uh, the Muslims think. Muhammad never calmed the sea and the wind by saying, peace, be still. Never. All right, well, this is the end of this Bible study. And um, hopefully I'll get a chance to finish this series. And uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.